Inferno stars Tom Hanks and is directed by Ron Howard. It is the third film in this trilogy that started with The Da Vinci Code, then Angels and Demons, and now Inferno. In this film, Tom Hanks is back as Dr. Robert Langdon. He wakes up in a hospital, he has amnesia, he has no idea what the hell happened to him in the last couple of days, but he's starting to get these visions of death and destruction and carnage and fire, people with backwards heads, rivers of blood, and he's like, what the hell does all this mean? Then he meets Felicity Jones's character, and now he's on this quest to find this plague, which if it's unleashed, will wipe out 95% of the human race. Race. and of course lots of other people want it, some government people want it, all these different parties are coming after Dr. Robert Langdon who pretty much knows the most about the things surrounding this plague and we gotta get it before the bad guys do and wipe out the human race. I never saw the Da Vinci Code but I saw Angels and Demons a few years ago and I can hardly remember anything about that film at all. I remember something to do with the Illuminati but honestly my brain just pushed 95% of that film completely out. So therefore my anticipation for Inferno was pretty much non-existent and that's a good thing because yeah it's it's not really that good of a film. For the first, I'd say, third of this film, I was actually kind of into it. I wasn't completely bored, but I wasn't incredibly entertained either. Tom Hanks wakes up in the hospital, he has amnesia, he's getting all these weird visions, and you're like, what the hell is all this stuff? And now he's trying to find this plague, and I was kind of into it for the first third, and I was hoping the film could maintain that level of slight intrigue. But then, of course, the film goes on and on and on, more information's being piled onto us, and some plot twists and revelations start happening in the middle towards the third act, and the film gets convoluted as hell. There's a lot of people going after this play, Tom Hanks is going after it, Felicity Jones is with Tom Hanks going after it, then there's this one group of people led by Ifran Khan going after it, then there's this other group of people led by this woman that Tom Hanks knows who are going after it. There's so many irons in the fire, there's lots of people going after this plague and later on in the film revelations start happening and these people turn out to be good people and these people turn out to be bad people, you're like who's good, who the hell's bad? Just stop it. There is a plot twist in the film that I was not expecting. It's pretty much the major plot twist of the film, which I will not spoil, of course. And I was like, okay, the film kind of caught me off guard. I was not expecting that. Then there's another revelation a little bit later on. It's not as big as that one, but the revelation happened now just like, that. that that's ludicrous. And I, I can't buy into that. It just felt so ridiculous how certain people would go to certain lengths to do the things that they ended up doing in the film. It's hard to tell you without ruining it for you but I just found it to be completely ridiculous and if that's how it is in the novel then fair enough but I've not read the novel I can only judge this as a film and I found that revelation to be kind of ridiculous. Tom Hanks is a phenomenal actor he's incredible he's one of the best actors working today I think and he gives a good performance in this film you can tell he's just trying to give something to it but not even Tom Hanks can fully save this film from being a forgettable snooze and the main villain plot of this film his whole motivation is the type of stuff you've heard so many times before it's like, oh, mankind's a disease, here's the cure, I'm gonna kill all the human race because you know, why not? It's pretty much what Samuel Jackson tries to do in Kingsman the Secret Service, only he tries to do it with an app instead of a deadly virus. And the stakes in this film are incredibly high. If Tom Hanks fails in his quest, then bye bye 95% of the human race, they're all gone. But I never once felt those stakes at all. I was never, you know, riveted by the film. I was never grabbing my seat going, oh my god, Tom Hanks, you better get this virus before they do because the human race is going to be extinct. <laughs> I was never like that in this film once. I was just like, yeah whatever. You need to make me care about the stakes in these types of films where the humanity is just on the verge of extinction or the world's gonna end, whatever is gonna happen. You need to make me care and this film just didn't make me care. In the end there's a very short review but all I can say is Inferno didn't really get me invested into the story. I never really cared that much about the stakes in the film. The first third of the film I was kind of into it but then more information just gets piled up and piled up. They go to all sorts of different places, they look at all sorts of different clues and then there's more plot twists and revelations. One of them was really, really ridiculous. And it all goes back to what I said earlier. Tom Hanks and Felicity Jones give good performances in this film, but there's just not enough to save this from being a forgettable snooze. I'm going to give Inferno a 2 out of 5. So those are my thoughts on Inferno, and if you're wondering why I'm back on camera doing reviews, it's because I kind of want to get back into doing these kind of reviews. I feel like these reviews are more personal. You can actually connect with the reviewer a bit more when you see them actually talking about the film. It's just the light from the windows is hard to block out because the new blinds I got are terrible. I'm looking into getting some curtains so I can actually go back to doing these reviews full time on camera. So in the next couple of weeks I might jump back and forth between video reviews and audio reviews so just bear with me as I try to get stuff sorted out. But in the meantime let me know in the comments below what you thought of Inferno if you have seen the film. How does it compare to The Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons and what do you think of this trilogy overall? Thank you very much for watching as always guys and if you want to see more of my stuff be sure to subscribe and to see one of my last videos click on one of the annotations right here. <laughs>